Hello everyone, today we're going to take a look at Minnesota tight end Max Williams' performance against Missouri in the Buffalo Wild Wings Bowl. He is widely regarded as this year's quote-unquote it guy at the tight end position in the draft, mainly because there's only one or two high quality players available at that position every year anyway. Uh, he's just a redshirt sophomore, coming out way early, two years left of eligibility remaining, which tells me he probably got a first or second round grade from the draft advisory board, which I tend to agree with for now. So let's start going over what Williams is not before breaking down what he is. He is not Eric Ebron. Uh, quite the opposite, actually. Ebron coming out of North Carolina last year was a hyper-athletic receiving tight end who was okay as a blocker. Most people were interested in his big playability in the pass game. Williams is uh, more of your traditional, well-rounded blocker and safety blanket as a receiver who can impact the game on all three downs, not just on third and long. Now, that's not to say he's slow. He can actually get downfield pretty quick despite looking stiff as a board sometimes. But he's about as flu as you would expect a 6'4", 250-pounder to be. So let's back this up, take a look at this All-22 replay here late in the game. Williams' release off the line is not really special. Strides a bit short, generally just looks a, a little bit stiff. That being said, despite not being fluid, he still covers enough ground to get over the top of the cornerback, position himself for a sideline catch. Love the stiff arm to keep separation uh, in case the ball comes his way, which it does not. But he's got the size and the body positioning to win that matchup against a corner every day of the week. Similar kind of thing here late in the first half. Williams is motioning across the formation, then running a shallow cross as the check down option on this pass play. Quarterback dumps it off to him. He breaks the linebacker's tackle in the backfield, then drags a 300-pound defensive tackle several yards for the first down. He might not be super quick and fluid like Ebron, but he makes up for it with pure power and toughness. So let's back this up and take a look at what made this work. As he's getting into the route, the difference between a pick six here and a first down is how Williams flattens the route away from the linebacker. A lot of inexperienced route runners will drift upfield by a yard or so when they run shallow crosses because they want to turn upfield and gain as much ground as possible once they get the ball in their hands. What Williams does is actually flatten two yards away from the backer, uh, back the other way downfield, eventually end up catching the ball behind the line of scrimmage. So why does he do this? Look at where he caught the ball and now look at where the linebacker is. If he drifted upfield, he would have ended up at the 29 yard line or so. Backer would be easily undercutting that route for a pick. Flattening down the route the other direction lets him not only make the catch uncontested because he's got more space, but he also has time to turn and brace against the tackle, which he breaks, uh, and get some good yards after catch. Again, not quite the athlete that Eric Ebron is, but if he keeps mastering those subtleties of route running, he doesn't really need to be. He can just win with body positioning like he did in college and make a really, really good NFL career out of it. Here's another example of Williams' savvy and toughness. He's lined up at the top of the screen against a defensive back, with the size advantage he has, he just benches the DB off of him, beats the press immediately, blows right by him in the end zone. Ball's under thrown a bit, which lets the corner come back and break it up, but this was a great job by Williams to use his physicality to get open in the first place. Let's back it up and take a look at slow motion. <laughs> I love how effortlessly he just tosses the corner aside here. That size and strength advantage is going to be how he wins at the next level. That's his meal ticket. Not all tight ends understand how to harness that, believe it or not but Williams does. Now where that strength and motor show up the most is in his run blocking. It's rare to find a good blocker at the collegiate level, especially one so young, but Williams is one of them. He's not as dominant as Rob Gronkowski coming out of college, but he's a hell of a lot better than your average bear when it comes to opening run lanes. He stays square, usually has good leverage, keeps his hands in the chest of the defender, always finishes the whistle with nastiness. You'll never see him quit early on a block. Now take this for instance, Williams is lead blocking for David Cobb, who's a decent prospect at running back in his own right. Now take a look at how Max squares up, shoots his hand inside, gets low to preserve it what leverage he can, just jacks the dude up. Cobb gets taken down by some other unblocked defenders, but Williams' man had no shot in hell of making the play there. He was done the moment Max zeroed in on him, which is what you hope for when you put on the tape of a tight end that supposedly should command an early round pick. Now overall, I can see why some people would be happy to spend a late-ish first round pick or second round pick on this guy. He's smart, he's tough, he's got size and strength, he can be a reliable chain mover or a blocker at the point of attack. Base case scenario turns out to be a Jason Witten clone who racks up first downs and blows open holes in the run game because he knows how to use his size to an advantage. Worst case scenario, you get a decent receiving threat who can at least give you a little boost to the production of your starting tailback. He's a classic high floor prospect who will probably end up as a really good get for the team at the top of the second round like Jacksonville, Oakland, Tennessee, etc. 
The fact that he's not a freak like Eric Ebron might drop him a bit on some boards, but I have a hunch he's going to make a team very happy for a very, very long time. All right, so that's it. Thanks for watching, everybody. Make sure to like and subscribe if you feel so inclined. Uh, I'll have more prospect breakdown videos out shortly as we get into the swing of draft season, so keep an eye out for those. Until then, later.